So here's the thing. I have seen quite a lot of people online saying that the M1 Pro um, and Max MacBook Pros are the best video editing tools on the market and they just crush every PC that is out there. You know, I don't know where you're standing on this, but I'd like to just have an open conversation. Let's look at some benchmarks. Let's really find out which is better and which is worse. So I've got Ben Kaiser here, who is testing their creative laptops and looking at the laptops in terms of creative perspective. You know, how good are they as tools when video editing and so on. So tell me about your uh, video editing uh, benchmarks and test when you did the timeline performance in Premiere Pro. Yeah, absolutely. Like the timeline performance is really where I was most impressed because export times, yeah, like maybe you saved 10 to 15 seconds compared to like a Legion 5 Pro. So that really doesn't matter that much in my opinion. Now, if you're, you know, exporting a full, you know, feature length film, that could make a big difference. But most people aren't exporting anything longer than 15 to 20 minute video. Most people, right? Most creative professionals are shooting ads or, or whatever. So the playback is really where it stood out to me. And the M1 Max dropped with a 6K B-RAW nine minute clip, nine frames out of 16,000 frames in a project. So I imported a nine minute 6K B-RAW clip, ran it in the timeline of Premiere Pro, and it dropped nine frames out of 16,000. The M1 Pro dropped 1800 frames out of 16,000. So the M1 Pro is pretty on par with most PC laptops, anywhere from an RTX 3060 to RTX 3080, right? The M1 Max, because of all the encoding and transcoding that takes place in the software, and in, it, it does really, really well. Now, if we move towards something like After Effects rendering, however, you know, if we're talking about doing After Effects rendering, you're going to end up with a lower score than an RTX 3080 because a dedicated GPU still has more power in that specific context. Just like right now, gamers are still getting better frames per second in certain AAA games than on a MacBook Pro because they're built to do certain tasks well. So that's my overall perspective and we can jump into some more questions. So uh, I've got some benchmarks over here for Premiere Pro. Yeah. So uh, timeline performance is probably the most important when it comes to video editing because rendering you can do overnight, but you can't do timeline performance overnight, right? So no, if the timeline gosh. performance sucks, then like the whole this thing is just, you know, falls to bits. I've got some benchmarks here from 12900K, 5950X Ryzen, and some of yep. the um, M1 Max and M1 Pro. So if you have a look at those over here, then you can see that at the 12900K with uh, RTX 3090, 64 gigabytes of DDR5 um, RAM, got 1,474 standard overall score in Puget Bench Premiere Pro score. If we go further down to like M Max and M1 Pro, you can see that the M1 Max is like 30% slower and the M1 yeah. Pro is about 36% slower than the overall like 12900K. Obviously we have the Ryzen well, 5950X this... over here as well, but they are slower in overall performance. And this is kind of the interesting question I have, because a lot of people are asking, should I get the M1 Max or the M1 Pro for video editing? Um, and I know we're talking PC build versus one of these, but let's say somebody's trying to make a decision between the three, M1 Pro, M1 Max, and a PC build. We're not seeing a drastic difference in performance, in my opinion, between an M1 Pro and an M1 Max, right? What are you seeing? What do you think? Like if somebody's trying to decide between the three, which one should they actually be deciding between, the Max or the Pro? With the PC build. Okay, so here's the thing. We're talking about the 12900K, which is the best, uh, what, you know, best you can buy. i9, right? But have a look at the i5 12600K, right? I just that's ran the one the right below it, right? No, that's the three below. That's the lowest one of the 12th gen at the moment re released. Oh, okay. Okay. That's Sorry. i5, right? It's got 10 cores. So it's pretty much the same as the Apple N1 Max. So it's got eight performance cores, two efficiency cores. We have a look at those performance benchmarks over here. And I'm still getting better scores than M1 Max, roughly about 20% better, right? To me, that is absolutely insane. And I can see that the 12600K, like if you're a PC fan, it is actually getting faster scores, slightly faster than the Ryzen 9 5950X 16 core monster PC or CPU that everyone is wow. talking about. So the i5, yeah. the lowest one, is very, very impressive. And you're saying, what's so impressive about it? Well, like Apple, it is kind of like an SOC as well because it has graphics on board as well. 
with video encoders, which really help with video editing and timeline performance. So a lot of times, even if you don't have a powerful GPU with that i5 and the onboard graphics, you're getting great performance. So for instance, you wouldn't need a massive GPU cost wise. You wouldn't need a 3080 or a 3090 to match the performance of one of these laptops. No. What, what GPU were you running with that i5? Uh, that is run with uh, RTX 3090, but I wanted to do 3090 so all of them are equal to not have any bottlenecks in any other front. No so bottlenecks. The C CPU can Got run it. as fast as we can, and we can see which one is like you know faster. But obviously, the Everyone yeah. Max has 32 core CPU there or GPU there as well. But I think you would still get like similar performance when you run down from 3090 to 3060, 3070. You'd get like similar performance as M1 Max or M1 Pro versus the i5-12600K. Yeah, I can agree with that because I run a 3900X on on my laps, on my PC build and it's pretty much even with these two. And I have a 1660 Ti. So yeah. I have lower graphic performance, higher CPU performance, and I'm about the same as these laptops. I mean, that is really impressive in terms of Apple side of things. To be able yeah. to compete with a full-on tower you know, release something like that on a battery power. It, it's exactly. like, it's insane, right? That is absolutely yeah. insane. Yeah, And that's why it's like, they are great. You know, like I ran all the tests on battery power. I ran none of the tests plugged into power, oh. you know, and that's the results <laughs> I got. Except I'm running like, I don't know, 650 watt power supply or something like that to power all the rest of the stuff. It's insane, right? In terms of yeah, watts, absolutely. like performance per watt, obviously Apple is like absolutely killing it. I wish that... Oh, it's not even a competition. Yeah. And so that's why, you know, the, the real question in video editing desktop PC versus MacBook Pro is, okay, what is your budget? What is your lifestyle? Oh, oh, oh. Let's and not what even... is your future? Oh, yeah. That's a big thing. That, the budget yeah. thing you mentioned, that is a massive thing. I think you can yeah, get I very... Yeah, I think my PC build was 1500 to $1,700 out the door. And yeah, exactly. just as powerful as one of these. Yeah. Go though, sorry. Okay, I know you can't get it always in terms of like you can't work w on a on a PC because it just doesn't work in your workflow how you work. That's another topic that we have already covered, so go and find it on the channel. Yeah. But in yep. let's say that if you can have both of them, then I think in terms of best bang for buck, a PC build will get you more for your money. The only concern that I think a lot of people have is, and we're starting to see, we're starting to dip out of this, the scalper situation. Um, it still is pretty bad. So I think that's probably the only reason people might be going with uh, a laptop PC versus a MacBook Pro right now, because you can actually get them without spiked prices. Other than that, if we're in a perfect world where you know parts are available and prices are not uh, inflated because of scalping, it really is the best bang for buck as a, as a desktop PC. And so this is my thought. You could get a $850 refurbished MacBook Air as your on-the-go laptop, great battery life, all that, and then pick up a desktop tower for about $1,500 to $1,700, and you're below $3,000, if, if my math is right, uh, well below $3,000, and you haven't even gotten out the door with one of these yet. And you have two systems which are for perfect for both use cases yeah on the go productivity laptop video editing at your workstation desktop yeah, pc it's absolutely right and i think um when people are doing video editing and choosing a video editing pc for like their systems now i think like 90 percent of the people will be super happy with the lowest i5 cpu i7 okay yeah. you're gonna see like extra little bit more in terms of the cost co uh, performance, but the cost is going to go up very, very quickly. It's not going to be linear yeah. like that. So for 99% well, of the people, right, you're going to be editing 4K video, which is going to be yep. well enough for this i5 super, 12600K. Super easy. And easy for these MacBook Pros. But yeah. what is your use case? And also keep in mind that as you go up in the 5 to 7 to 9, you're not getting necessarily massive increase in single app performance. What you're getting is more multi-core performance. This is, an, this, is a, this is a conversation that rarely happens is when I go from an i5 to an i9, yeah, I get about 20% increase in performance, but I don't get anything else. Like if I'm not multitasking, I don't get the value. I don't get the five to $700 in value. Oh yeah. I don't. 
The value comes in, I'm running 15 apps at once from I9 to I5, not I can export three seconds faster. Oh yeah. So that's the thing is if you're considering a PC build versus a MacBook Pro, you don't need an I9 to compete with the MacBook Pro. What you need is an I5 to I7. And then what you can do is just close down a couple apps. You know, Don't run everything at once, even though you probably could. But it's less of a, you know, it's less of a, I don't know if it's lateral performance increase and more of a horizontal performance increase when you go from i9, i5 to i9. I think especially when you start specking out the SSD specs from MacBook Pro, um, if, if you're looking at the, let's say, the Mac CPU and the Mac GPU, and then, what, mm -hmm. 32 gigabytes of RAM, at that point, the, the MacBook Pro is can be very, very, very tempting compared to PC you know, builds because they're very yeah. similar price. But as soon as you yes. need more storage for your um, you know, MacBook Pros and more RAM, then suddenly the PC value becomes much bigger than the MacBook Pro because... You can quickly upgrade easily. Yeah. If a part breaks, so fraction grab that the... fraction of the cost. Grab that part, replace it. You know, Absolutely. Uh, for any for under two hundred dollars for most parts in a PC build, oh, yeah. uh, outside of the CPU or the GPU, which are usually, in my opinion, what I've seen are the, like the last things to fail. Yeah, and you know, the surrounding it, elements fail first. Exactly, and the the SSDs. Like Apple made a big deal about the seven point four gigabytes per second SSD speeds, which you're not actually getting in all the configurations. You need at least certain amount of space. Uh, or a certain amount of capacity until you start hitting that speeds on there. Mm. Whereas on the PC, like we've been having the PCA 4.0 gen drives, you know, for ages. You can get them from laptops. They run over 7,000 megabytes per second. Yeah. But believe me, yep. we don't need that. I don't know a single person who needs a 7,000 megabytes per second NVMe drive. But let's say you do need them, then you can easily get the same capacity, uh, same speed drives for a PC for half the cost of the MacBook Pro. I think that's the biggest thing is like, Apple knows how to market, okay? Oh, yeah. That's them from the beginning. And that's not a bad thing, that's a good thing because they create raving fans and raving fans are fun and they are exciting and they and they they buy into your product. They buy into a great product. This is a great product. For me, I would say, yes, they did it this time. The last iteration of the MacBook Pros, wah, but they did it this time. And so what I'll say is they make things that they do sound like they're the first one to do it. Okay. Just like them saying they, they gave you an HDMI port. No, the morons <laughs> took it away and gave it back to you. Okay. Like it's silly. Like it's really silly. We can't like, we're not windows fanboys. We're reality fanboys. Like we believe in looking at data. Yeah. He has a Mac. Exactly. I have a Mac here. I have two Mac. I use a Mac almost every single day. I have a 2015 MacBook Pro. <laughs> I am not a Windows fanboy. I like Mac OS. I hate I love Windows it. OS. It's awful. I like 20% of Windows OS. Okay. 20%. I like that I can right click basically, but you can control click anyway. Stupid. But what we're trying to say is we are data fanboys. Like that's what we look at. We look at the data, we look at the usability, and we compare apples to apples. And people often say, well, you're comparing oranges to oranges. No, we're looking at scores and price points and value and components. Absolutely. Like, yes, if you want to run cool, quiet, no battery, no, no plug-in, battery life performance, then yes, get this. But if you don't care about that, and many people don't. Many people don't want to walk around the house in their underwear editing videos. Many people are perfectly fine plugging their laptop or their desktop PC in and editing. I am one of those people. I'm not offended by fan noise. It's nicer to not have fan noise, but I put on my headphones and edit my video and don't hear any fan noise. So in conclusion, Premiere Pro, uh, which one is better, PC versus MacBook Pro, right? Let's underline some of these things or some of the things that you might have seen online that I think is important to underline a little bit as well. Pure benchmarks and pure, if you get the best of PC and the best of, uh, you know, N1 Max MacBook Pros, the MacBook Pros are a little bit slower, right? Mm -hmm. In terms of everyday usage and when you're editing 4K video, right? Then you're not going to see a big difference because both no. of these systems can do it easy and you're not going to notice yep. a difference. Yeah, I think it's really like looking at your lifestyle, looking at what you do on a day to day and making a, a qualified decision. Like my example, you could buy a MacBook Air for your on the go and a PC build for your at home work and you'd be great. It'd be almost about the same price as buying the M1 Max 
as your only computer. Yeah. Now the issue is if the M1 Max dies, you're literally out of any type of work. Okay, so that's one idea. But if you need on the go, if you're a documentary filmmaker, you know, uh, my coworker's husband, her, her husband is a documentary filmmaker and he's on the go and he's shooting, you know, very expensive cameras with high frame rates and high resolutions. So he, he would need this type of power on the go. Yeah. Um, he would need to be in the middle of Africa, making sure they got the shot, you know, yeah. and not having to wait on the MacBook air to like, uh, 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 in the playback, you know, that makes sense for him. Um, but if you're somebody who doesn't have to be on the go and you just walk back into your studio and edit for half the price, then that makes more sense. Yeah, absolutely. I think if you're asking me, I w like, which one should I get? I would ask you first, can you live without the portability aspect? If, yeah, that's, that's the number one question. If you can, I think the 12600K PC build that you can get is, is going to be unbelievable, a 4K video editor. Uh, any any video editing codec you throw at it and I think you're going to get better bang for your buck and you can you know use those parts later on in the future and things like that but like Ben was saying if you are in the middle of Africa shooting I don't know the um, planet earth 3 with uh, David uh, what's his name uh you know, Addenborough. There you, the guy. Addenborough. Yeah, the guy. Oh, there you go. Uh, David Addenborough. <laughs> then, uh, then you you need that type of thing. You but I think it. for most people, it's the only thing on Earth that currently does what it does. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's have... why it's amazing. It is amazing. I mean, we're not saying that MacBook Pros are bad. Like, please don't get us wrong. I hope no, it's amazing. No, I hope no one's like, you know, watch half the video and then oh, these guys are saying MacBook Windows Pros bad are boys. bad. Windows bad boys. <laughs> What we're saying is yeah, they're no, absolutely amazing. awesome tools, but just to put it in perspective, like PC builds are very, very powerful. It's not like wiping all the PC world out of, you know, the market. They still have their place. MacBook Pros have mm -hmm. their, still their place. Uh, you just have to figure out like, which place are you? I hope you subscribe to one of our channels because that is a good place to be. Hit that like button. That, is, that makes you feel better. I promise you. When you do that, it will make you feel better. And the time. dislike button doesn't matter anymore because you can't even see how many dislikes it has. So you might as well hit the like button if you hated the video. Yeah, might as, might as well. <laughs> might as well do that, okay?